Hey guys, welcome to the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's episode is going to be another deck tech and I'm going to be guiding you through my list for Riel the Everwise. She's a super exciting new commander that was just printed in the Ikoria standard set and I'm super excited to build and play this commander and I hope you are too. Before we get into today's episode and I break down the deck, we'd just like to give a huge shout out to this channel's sponsor, Game Good Lehigh. If you're in the Utah County area, you need to check this store out. They've got an amazingly friendly staff, a super huge selection on on cards and card accessories and also deck boxes and all of that they've also got a super huge selection of board games and things for D&D and Warhammer if that's what you're into so you for sure want to check that out and additionally if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet and you enjoy our content that'd be a super great thing for you to do it's free super easy and we really appreciate the support and you'll stay in the loop with our future gameplay videos that we post every month and our weekly deck decks that come out every Monday with that out of the way let's dive into today's episode like I said we're gonna be doing a deck tech on Riel the Everwise Riel is a legendary creature human wizard that costs one a blue and a red. She says she gets plus one plus a zero for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard and whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards and she is a zero three. So Riel cares about instants and sorceries in her graveyard and us discarding cards. So how are we going to win with this deck and what is the strategy that we're going to use to get there? So we're going to be playing lots of instants and sorceries that let us draw and discard cards. We're going to want to fill our graveyard with as many instants and sorceries as we can. We have lots of ways of winning with combat damage from Riel or some of our other creatures that also have a similar ability of getting bigger with instants and sorceries in our graveyard. We've got ways of dealing a mass amount of damage to our opponents based off of how many cards we discard. We've even got a way of winning through Thassa's Oracle, but that's just a super, super backup win con just in case. But I really like Riel because she takes a whole bunch of cards that before weren't super playable in Commander and she gives them a home and actually makes them super useful in the deck. And I'm gonna go over those cards just when I get into the actual list, but I just love commanders that take a bunch of super maybe lame cards that maybe never saw any play and are now all of a sudden really relevant and really powerful. So I've broken this deck down into a couple categories, but let's start with the ramp. The essential thing to know with the ramp in this deck is we are trying to get Riel out as quickly as possible, hopefully on turn two and turn three, and abuse her ability as much as possible. If we can get her to stick for like maybe two or three turns after we've casted her, we're gonna be in great shape. We're gonna be playing Arcane Signet, Fire Diamond, Is It Signet, Sky Diamond, Soul Ring, Talisman of Creativity, and Wayfarer's Bobble. All of these mana rocks can come in as early as turn one or turn two and help us get Riel out as early as turn two or turn three, depending on our scenario. And that's essentially where we want to be. Additionally, we're playing some other forms of ramp with Neheb Jedhor Champion. And this is kind of an interesting source of ramp because he says whenever he deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, we can discard any number of cards. And if we do, we draw that many cards and add that much red mana into our mana pool. And until the end of turn, we don't lose this mana is steps and phases end so we can kind of hold that man into our second main phase this is super useful because not only does this add a bunch of red mana to our mana pool that also tri triggers riel when we discard those cards with neheb's ability and we're going to draw that many cards as well so that's super useful in this deck we're also going to be playing high tide which is one blue mana that says until end of turn all islands produce an additional blue when tapped for mana that is super useful in this deck we can actually use a lot of that mana from our islands to keep wheeling and discarding cards away and we'll get into those wheels and discard effects later and then the last ramp source that we're playing has a little bit more utility stapled onto it other than just ramp but it is in the deck primarily as a ramp card and that is surly bajasaur costs three and a red and whenever you discard a creature card you can put a plus one plus encounter on it and whenever you discard a land card which is the important part you can create a treasure token and whenever you discard a non-creature non-land card surly badger sword fights up to one target creature you don't control so in a weird scenario we could use it as a kill spell to fight something we can make it a little bigger but ideally it's in the deck to make us treasure tokens that we can use to sacrifice and make mana to play more spells Okay, so the next category of this deck is our draw, discard, and wheel category. So these are all the effects that let us draw cards and discard cards, or discard cards as an additional cost, or just wheel effects. So we've got a bunch of them, and a lot of them are pretty similar, so I'm just going to kind of bunch them together. We've got Burning Inquiry that makes each player draw three cards and then discard three cards at random. Careful Study, which is basically Faithless Looting in blue. We draw two cards and discard two cards. And then we have Faithless Looting, which draw two cards, discard two cards with a flashback cost of two and a red, so we can cast it from our graveyard later. We've got Ideas Unbound, which, uh, which for blue blue, we can draw three cards and discard three cards at the end of turn. We then have Wild Guess, which we have to discard a card first, but it lets us draw two cards, which is super useful. 
We then have Attunement, which is an enchantment that costs two and a blue. This is a super key piece and probably one of my favorite cards in the deck, and it says, return Attunement to its owner's hand, draw three cards, and then choose and discard four cards. So it gets us through our deck really fast and can basically get us seven cards deep if that's the first time we've discarded in a turn. We then have Thrill of Possibility and Tormenting Voice, which essentially are the same thing. We have to discard a card, but then we can draw two cards. So with Riel out, we actually come out with three cards into our hand. And then we've got Cathartic Reunion, which is very similar, but we have to discard two cards and then we draw three cards. So we're gonna walk away with five cards in hand. And then for our wheel effects, we then have Wheel of Fate, Suspend four, which says for one and a red, rather than cast this card from your hand, you pay one and a red and exile it with four time counters on it. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we remove a time counter. And then when there are no more time counters left on it, we can cast it without paying its mana cost. Each player discards his or her hand and then draws seven cards. So it's a very budget form of Wheel of Fortune. We're then playing Windfall, which says each player discards their hand then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. This gets super cool if we have Riel out and we've got a bunch of cards in our hand, maybe upwards of 10, 15 cards. We're going to make everybody discard their hands and draw 15, and that can lead to some super crazy turns. We're then playing Bizarre Trade Mage, which when it enters the battlefield, we draw two cards and discard three cards. So if Riel out, we're going to be walking away with five cards in our hand. We then have Jace's Archivist, which has an activated ability for blue and tap. And then you do Windfall, which each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. And then we're playing Magus of the Bazaar, which we can tap it to draw two cards and discard three cards. Magus of the Wheel, which is another super budget form of Wheel of Fortune. It, we can pay one in a red to tap and sacrifice it to make each player discard their hands and draw seven. And then we're playing a wheel that really just works for us with Telerian Winds. And it says discard your hand and then draw that many cards. And this is super nice because it's an instant. So we can cast it on our opponent's end step and not have to cast it during our turn, which is super nice. And then we're playing Visions of Beyond. And this isn't really a discard card, but it's just a super, super, super powerful uh, draw spell in our deck. It says draw a card. And if a graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, we draw three cards instead. And with how many cards we're discarding and how quickly we're churning through our deck, this is almost always going to be one blue mana, draw three cards at instant speed. Now with our draw spells and wheels out of the way, let's go over our interaction. The ways that we have of interacting with our opponent's side of the board and stopping our opponents from getting rid of our key pieces. So let's go over the counter spells that we're running. And we really are just using these counter spells as ways of defending Riel from targeted removal or from board wipes or maybe from an opponent comboing off. So we've got Arcane Denial, counter spell, Foil. So Foil is super great in this deck. Um, we can cast it essentially for free and, and actually come out with the same amount of cards in our hand because if Riel is out and we have to discard an island and another card to pay Foil's cost, we're just going to draw off of Riel and we can stop a spell. We're then playing Forbid, which is super cool in this deck because it, it can counter any spell and we can buy it back by discarding two cards from our hand as the spell resolves, which with Riel out, we can just draw those, we can just draw anyways and we get Forbid back into our hand. So it's a repeatable counter spell. We're then playing Negate, which can counter any non-creature spell, and Stubborn Denial, which more times than not is going to be a one mana negate. It counters any spell unless it's, unless it's controller pays one generic mana. But if we control a creature with power four or greater, we just counter that spell altogether. And Riel, we just have to have four instants and sorceries in our graveyard for her to be four or greater, which is super easy in this deck. Next up, let's go over the targeted removal. Uh, things that we have of just dealing with a problem right on the spot. So we've got Is It Charm, which can also counter a spell, but also do two damage to target creature. Reality Shift, which can exile any creature. Uh, Turbulent Dreams, which is also super cool with Riel because we have to, as an additional cost to play Turbulent Dreams, uh, discard X cards from our hand and return X target non end permanents to their owner's hands. So this can be almost a board wipe if we have enough cards in our hand. We're then playing Beacon Bolt, which is super useful because it can deal damage to, it deals damage to target creature equal to the total number of instants and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard. And it has jump start, so we can cast it from our graveyard by discarding a card. And then besides having targeted removal, we have a bunch of ways of wiping the board clean if things get out of hand with Devastation Tide, which returns all non land permanents to their owner's hands. And it has a miracle cost of one in a blue. So if it's the first card we draw in a turn, we can pay it for, we can cast it for its miracle cost. And then Incendiary Command, which has a bunch of different uses in the deck, but I primarily put it in there as a board wipe target removal slash thing, but it can also be a wheel. So it says, choose two, Incendiary Command deals four damage to target player, or Incendiary Command deals two damage to each creature, or destroy target non-basic land, or each player discards all the cards in his or her hand, then draws that many cards. 
We're then playing the Hiri's Wrath, which as an additional cost to cast, we have to discard X cards. And the Hiri's Wrath deals damage equal to the total converted mana cost of the discarded cards to each of up to X target creatures or planeswalkers. So this can be a super nice board wipe. We're then playing Pyroclasm, which is a super cheap board sweeper to sweep away a bunch of tokens or mana dorks. It deals two damage to each creature. And finally, we're playing Chandra's Ignition, which can also be a win con in this deck, but it says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. So with how big Riel is going to get, because we're playing about 37 instants and sorceries, it's going to get super big. We can wipe the board super easily and probably even win the game with this card. All right, now let's go over the payoffs that we have for drawing all these cards and discarding all these cards and basically just taking advantage of what the deck is trying to do. Let's start off with Talran, the Sky Summoner, and Young Pyromancer. Both of these do very similar things. They each say whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get to make a token. Talran gives us a 2-2 blue drake, and Young Pyromancer makes us a 1-1 red elemental creature token. We're super light on creatures comparatively. We're only playing 14. So any way that we can of making more tokens is super helpful. Along that same vein of thought, we're playing Chasm Skulker, which every time we draw a card, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it. And then when it dies we make x11 squid creature tokens where x is the number of plus one plus encounters on chasm skulker so with how many cards we're drawing in this deck this thing is going to get huge and make us a ton of squids when it finally dies some of our other creatures that kind of benefit off of all the instants and sorceries we're casting are enigma drake and spellheart chimera each of which have power equal to the number of instants and sorceries in our graveyard so these are super these can be super big creatures in this deck probably swing in puts our opponents on a super fast clock a sweet new card that was printed in Ikoria that is a really good include in this deck is Ominous Seas. It's an enchantment that says whenever you draw a card, put a four shadow counter on Ominous Seas and remove eight four shadow counters from Ominous Seas to create an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token. Now it doesn't have any evasion on it, but making an 8-8 for drawing eight cards, that's bit, we want to be drawing cards anyways, and this is repeatable. We don't have to sacrifice the enchantment when all the count as an additional cost to make an 8-8. So we can do this several times throughout the game. This can come in really clutch if our opponent are playing really big creatures. So this next category is kind of similar to the previous, but on a much larger scale. So these are our win cons or the cards in this deck that pay us off the most for having a lot of instant sorceries in our graveyard or drawing a lot of cards and discarding a lot of cards. I feel that these cards are just a lot more useful and a lot more powerful than the ones mentioned before. Let's start off with Firestorm. It's a card that I'm really excited about. It only costs one red mana and it's an instant and we choose and discard X cards and Firestorm deals X damage to each of X target creatures and players. So if we discard 10 cards, we can do 10 damage to X creatures and or players. So we get a lot of value off of that. Then Fist of Flames is a super cool common. Um, for one and red at instant speed, we can draw a card. And until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus one plus zero for each card that we've drawn this turn. This card can be super huge if we've drawn a bunch of cards and Riel is massive because we've got maybe 10, 15 instance of sorceries in our graveyard and we've drawn, you know, maybe 10, 15 cards in a turn. It's not unlikely that Fist of Flames can just make Riel strong enough to one shot somebody. Uh, next up, we have Glinthorn Buccaneer, which is a super cool minotaur pirate it has haste whenever you discard a card glinthorn buccaneer deals one damage to each opponent this is a card that can end the game super quickly if it stays out on the table in a couple of turn cycles we're going to be able to discard enough cards probably just to win the game we're then playing rune chanter's pike which is an artifact equipment that costs two and two to equip and the equipped creature has first strike and gets plus x plus o where x is the number of instants and sorcery cards in our graveyard so we can kind of give riel's effect to any one of our other creatures or any one of the other tokens that we make from Talran sky summoner chasm skulker or young pyromancer and then we're also playing rise from the tides which is one of my favorite cards in blue it says create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token for each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard so it's not unlikely that this makes us 15 maybe even 20 black zombie creature tokens. That's a lot of power on board. We're then playing Conflagrate, which is a super great card in this deck. Oftentimes we're going to want to be casting it for its flashback cost, which is red, red and discard X cards. And it says Conflagrate deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. So the more cards we discard, the more things we can hit and the more damage we can do. And if we time it correctly, this can win us the game. The next couple of cards that we're playing are only in the deck for one specific purpose and only with a commander out. So I tried to limit how many of them there are and we're playing just two of them. And that is Distortion Strike and Slip Through Space. Each of them cost one mana and can make target creature unblockable. 
Distortion Strike has the added benefit of having Rebound and Slip Through Space lets us draw a card. So if we don't really need it right now, uh, we can just cast it as a cantrip, draw a card, and then move on with the game. We're also playing Rogue's Passage, which is a super cool land that can make one of our creatures unblockable, oftentimes going to be Riel. Or if we have Enigma Drake out or Spellheart Chimera and those are strong enough to do the trick, we can also cast those spells on them. Maybe if our opponents have some flyers and we can't get through with them, it's another way of just getting through and ending the game. We also have Wonder, which as long as it is in our graveyard and we control an island, all of our creatures have flying. This is really in the deck just to give Riel flying so she can fly above our opponent's blockers and, and swing in and kill somebody. We also have the potential of making a lot of tokens, and we also have Rune Chanter's Pike that we can equip onto one of our tokens or one of our other creatures, so it's super nice to just give all of them flying. Next up we have Fateful Showdown, which it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of cards in our hand, and then we discard all the cards in our hand and draw that many cards. So this is simultaneously a could be kill spell and a wheel stapled onto one card at instant speed for four mana. Super useful card in the deck and it could be a win con. And our final win con is Thassa's Oracle. This is just in here because I really like the card. I think it's really powerful. Even if we're not casting it to win the game, it can give us some super good value. Uh, being able to manipulate the top cards of our library so we can guarantee what we're going to draw is super nice. And it's not unlikely or impossible that we can manually draw through our entire library. And I think that this is just good as a fail safe just in case that does happen. If maybe a game goes really long and we're having to dig through our library for answers and we've basically expended a lot of resources and our library is getting really empty, this is just a super good fail safe backup plan and just to make sure we don't mill ourselves out. As far as recursion goes, we aren't playing a whole lot of ways of getting things back from our graveyard, but we are playing Recall, which is XX in blue for a sorcery that says discard X cards and then return a card from your graveyard to your hand for each card discarded this way, and we exile Recall. So this can be a super cool card. We can return a bunch of our cantrips from our graveyard back into our hand, like Burning Inquiry or Careful Study, or it's super useful if maybe earlier on in the game we had to discard one of our answers because it wasn't what we needed at the time, or there was something else we needed a little bit more. Recall just serves the purpose of getting that back from our graveyard into our hand, and it's a super cool card. We are playing a bunch of lands in our mana base that have cycling. I'm not going to be going over all the lands, but we are playing about four or five of them that can cycle themselves away. And how that works with Riel is you discard that card, or you discard the land after you pay the cycling cost, and you're actually going to draw two cards. I think that's super efficient. Being able to get rid of a land that's stuck in our hand to getting two cards from our library is super cool. And I really feel like that's just the whole story of Riel. I love the fact that it mitigates that downside on a lot of these spells that say discard cards and turns that into card advantage. Basically makes you walk away from all of those discard spells further ahead than you were before. And that's why I really love Riel. And that's it for today's video. This is my Riel, the Everwise deck, also known as Is It Wise? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you sticking around this long. And if you like this video and you like our content and you haven't subscribed yet, it'd mean a lot to us if you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our future deck decks that come out every Monday or our future gameplay videos. Also, the list for this deck is included in the show notes. It'll take you to my tapped out page and you can see my other decks that I've built and maybe leave a comment on this video or a comment on the tapped out list if you have any questions about the deck or maybe any questions about cards that I didn't include or maybe cards that you would you would have included. I'd be love to talk about that and debate that. That's one of the best parts about building these decks is we get to hear input from all of our YouTube subscribers and it's super great to see your guys' input. So definitely leave a comment down there if I missed a card that maybe you would have included. And if you want to see this deck play in one of our gameplay videos let us know i'd be happy to build this deck and play it and once again thank you guys so much for watching this video and i uh, hope you guys have an excellent day